of you here today. We welcome you. It's good to be able to just gather. I have a special note here that I would like to read. And this is from Marion. Thank you all for all the love and kindness you have shown to Farrell and me over the years, especially all the prayers. Thank you for your donation uh, for Gideon Bibles. Thank you for all the food that was brought to the house after the funeral. It was very, very good and much too plentiful. I appreciate and love every one of you. God bless you all. And that's from Mary. And Mary, good to have you in church. We've been praying for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have a uh, recommendation that we would like to bring for your assent. A little background. We support Rick and Bev Gaudet and have been supporting them for many years. But I was called on to help a couple of the administrators at BMW uh, to deal with some issues that uh, Rick especially has got going. And so here's the recommendation. Rick and Bev Gaudet have decided to resign as a missionary from BMW as well as members of our church. Support for them will end July 31st, 2023. And I'd like to ask your assent if you are willing to stand behind this, if you would just raise your hand so I can see it. Are there any opposed? We have invested, Patty and I have invested many, many hours uh, with this couple. It's not just a knee-jerk re reaction or a short-term decision. And so it's heartbreaking, but it's been necessary. So. Thank you very much for allowing me to share that with you. Uh, we also want to be praying, if you will, for uh, Daryl Dean. He is at uh, Gwinnett Medical, uh, and he is there because the gout, which settled into his right, no, left big toe, has been so painful. And now they brought him into the hospital because he's got a serious infection. And so please be praying for Daryl, as well as Wendell, as well as Bill and Gloria, and others. Uh, we're just real concerned about all of these prayer requests. So thank you very much, and I'll ask Joel to come. Just to share a few updates, uh, and we'll share about uh, Phil and Helene DeMart as well, just a few uh, very short things. But uh, Phil and Helene are missionaries to uh, France. They are currently in the States on furlough and uh, traveling around. They will actually be with us on uh, August 20th, so about a little, little over a month from now. Uh, so we'll get to share with them and, and see them in the service and, and hear uh, their direct updates. Um, but just another a few reminders, um, aside from what Pastor said as well, um, continue to pray for Marion and for Freeman family. Um, we also have a, a um, meal that we are sharing together as a church family on August 27th uh, after the service. Uh, invite friends, family, neighbors, um, you know, we always try to, to present opportunities to, to, to those um, people that you're developing that contact, that friendship, that relationship with to, to invite them to, to church. Continue to pray for our pastoral search process. We, our most recent meeting was yesterday. Uh, we met, usually meet for about an hour and a half or so, and we'll be meeting again very soon, actually in, in person for an extended meeting as we uh, just look through um, candidates and different opportunities for us to, to look at, at uh, uh, folks that are looking for uh, to minister. Um, we, it's, it's a slow process, and um, it, but it's, progress is being made. So pray for us as, for patients to be directed in the right direction as well. Um, just pray for the pastoral search process. And uh, just continue to pray for the children's church ministries. Um, right now, during the summer, uh, Emily and, and Miss Sammy are really leading it every Sunday, but as the, the, the school year starts, uh, there will be opportunities for, you know, really volunteers to, to take on. And um, if you think about it, if you've got only got two or three people involved, then somebody's really stuck there 
all year. But if you have three, you know, three, four, even five people, if you have a rotation, then it allows for people to be in the service and to take part in, in that ministry. We don't, we just don't want people to miss out on, on um, the, the teaching and the, the fellowship that is here. Uh, even though obviously church uh, ministry, ministry for the children is, is extremely important, but we're just look, we'll be looking for volunteers come the, the start of the school year. Let me take these to the Lord in prayer, and, and we'll open up service that way. Father, we are so grateful for Phil and Helene and Lord their service and in, in, uh, the, uh, the mission field in France. We pray as they travel around here in the states that they would feel refreshed, that their travels would be uh, would go safely and. Lord, as they uh, prepare to, to return uh, towards, I think, towards the end of the year, Lord, that you would uh, continue to provide for all of their needs. Uh, Lord, we look forward to seeing them soon um, and to just hearing their, their in-person update of, as, as to the ministry. Lord, we do pray for Rick and Bev as they uh, this transition and this new point in their life. Lord, we uh, commend them to your hands, to, Lord, to, that they would continue to seek your face, Lord, as they uh, live in, in Austria. We just pray for for growth and blessing in their lives, Father. Lord, we pray for the ministries of our church, for the children's church ministries, for our ministries of fellowship that we have. And, uh, Lord, we pray that we would uh, continue to see these grow. Lord, lay it on, on our uh, folks' hearts where they can serve and where they can help and be of a, an encouragement to others. <coughs> Lord, we pray for those who, um, well, for, for the Freeman family, Lord, and, and their loss, Lord, we pray for their encouragement, and uh, Lord, for, we, we are so thankful for your faithfulness, Lord, even when, when things are not good, when things don't feel well, when, and when grief is upon us, Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness and love towards us. Father, thank you for our many blessings as well, those things that we just don't even think about, think of, of thanking you for, uh, those things that pass by us each day, and we take for granted, Lord, you, you have a hand in all that happens in our lives, and we are so grateful for your faithfulness. Help us now, Father, as we sing, as we pray, as we hear your word preached, Lord, that it would be to your honor and glory and that it would challenge our, our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's try it one more time. Good morning. There Good morning. we go. Good morning. It helps if I turn it on. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen in the back, for smiling at me, knowing that I hadn't done, done that. <laughs> um, in case you are wondering, the good morning, good morning. What do they look like again? We have a picture. Oops. <laughs> That's okay. Our superior clicker um, did not know. Uh, it was my fault. I did not communicate. My mother-in-law never does anything wrong. I just want that said on camera so it's recorded. Just, okay, we're good there. So yes, please do pray for uh, Phil and Blaine and their family as they're traveling. Uh, if you're not connected with them on social media, and you are on social media, I request that because they send up some pretty good updates, just little ones throughout the week and so forth, and it's nice to see how they're doing. So do pray for them. Thank you, Mom. Um, I have another announcement that I want to share. This is a very adorable announcement, very exciting announcement. I'd like to let my church family know that my daughter, Sarah, will be blessing our family with a new little baby boy in January of next year. Hey. It's not on social media yet, so if you want to comment or congratulate her and Chase on sweet little, and here's his name, Levi Martin, please text them. Thank you. So if you, if you will, do see them on social media, they're not wanting anything out there right now, but if you want to phone call, text, beat a drum, send a smoke signal, carry your pigeon works too, to let them know that you'll be praying for them. We definitely as a family are super excited about little Levi. So please be praying for Amen. Chase and Sarah Valentour as they go through the pregnancy. Are you glad that you're here this morning? Yes. Are you really though? And I'm not questioning, I'm not questioning the, the affirmative response you just gave me. But consider how amazing it is to be able to join together with your brothers and sisters in Christ and to praise God together. I hope that you praise him throughout the week. But it is a privilege to be able to, without really any worry whatsoever of anybody saying that you can, that we get to come together and to praise his name. And is our God worthy of our praise this morning? Amen. He is. Um, in our Bible reading, um, we, we just read Psalm 150 last night. 
and I'm going to read it for you this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I personally would love to see timbrel and dancing. Um, I wish we had a box of instruments so I could pass out the trumpet, the harp, the lyre, the strings, the pipe. I think that would be great. We don't have that this morning. What we do have are two stringed instruments and two, well, they're all stringed instruments except for the electronic one. But we have these instruments, and better yet, as the last verse, verse 6 says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Everybody take a breath for me. And let it out. You can praise the Lord. You're breathing. Let's use that breath to give him praise this morning. Would you please stand as we sing together? correct in stating there's a different song service up on the screen than what I'm singing? <laughs> so we're going to go ahead um, and I'm going to play during the offering while our technical advisor uh, takes a look at what's going on. Um, but that's okay. So um, second. Isn't it a blessing to be able to focus on the Lord? 
and to focus on Christ. Remember, the messages that we're hearing during this series that our pastor is sharing with us from the book of Hebrews is that Jesus is better. So isn't it good that we focus on the Lord Jesus? And, and I hope it's not just today. I hope that you're focusing on Christ throughout the week because he is our Savior. He is our King. What are you doing for your King? What are you doing for your Lord and your Master? And I hope that he is that in your life. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, may today be the day that you, are, that you become one of his children. But if you are, then praising him and, and, and following him is so much sweeter and so much greater because you know him personally. I read Psalm 150 just a little while ago, but we have a song that goes right along with that. So I'm going to ask you to sing it with me this morning. And it is up there. That's fantastic. <laughs> things would be done on earth as they are in heaven because in heaven God is glorified and honored and, and, and there's singing all the time and we get to do that on Sunday 
We get to do that anytime we open our mouths to praise the Lord through song. But how great it will be one day when we all get to heaven. song of praise to our God before the message, and as we're singing, our kids can be dismissed to Children's Church.
just love being here today. What a blessing it is. And now we're going to open the Word of God. I'd like to speak this morning on the subject, Lest We Slip Away. We're going to be looking in the book of Hebrews, so if you would take your Bible and turn to Hebrews chapter 2. As Dave said earlier, the theme of this book is Jesus is better. Better than anything we might come up with. Better than the religions that have been developed. Better than the experiences that go on in some churches. Jesus is better. As the writer of Hebrews continues, the writer is concerned about the initial recipients, which were Jewish people, living in the Palestine Jew Jewish area. His concern was that the hearers of the gospel who had not yet trusted Christ not drift back into their old religion and into their own ways. He deals with this problem, the superiority of Christ, in two ways. First of all, by emphasizing the superiority of Christ and the new covenant established by Jesus after his sacrifice on the cross. Also, secondly, he deals with this as he presents a series of five exhortations. And we won't cover all five this morning. But in chapter 1, remembering Jesus is better, we see that Jesus was presented as more superior than the Old Testament prophets. Secondly, he presented the superiority of Christ over the angels. In chapter 1. Now as we turn the corner into chapter 2, we see the first of those five exhortations. In these exhortations, we find a warning about the danger of drifting. We said in our title, Lest We Slip Away. And the figure, obviously, that's suggested is a boat or a canoe. And you can imagine being in a boat. And you're enjoying a day out there on the water, and then the boat, because of the current you can't see, 
begins to pull the boat away and you begin to drift. That's a picture of what the writer of Hebrews had in mind when he was warning us not to drift. I want us to examine this morning <clears throat> the reasons behind this exhortation, the various currents that can cause us to drift, and thirdly, the key to avoiding drifting away. So if you have your Bible, we're looking at Hebrews chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proves steadfast and every the trans sorry, transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Allow me to back up to verse 2. The word spoken through angels during the time of Moses warned the people about the behavior that they must have and the sin that they must avoid. And if they didn't obey, they would not go into the promised land. They received a just reward. With that, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Which at first began to be spoken of by the Lord while he was on earth, and was confirmed by those who heard him, the eyewitness writers about the Lord Jesus Christ. God also bearing witness, both through signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. God sent his son, chapter 1 tells us, to present the right way to heaven. I found this quote, <coughs> excuse me, and it's sobering. Hell is undoubtedly full of people who were never actively opposed to Jesus Christ but who simply neglected the gospel. Such people are in view in the four verses that we have read before you. These people know the truth and even believe the truth in the sense that they acknowledge its truthfulness or its rightness. They are well aware of the good news of salvation, which is provided by the Lord Jesus Christ, but are not willing to commit their lives to Him. So they drift past the call of God into eternal damnation. This tragedy makes these verses extremely important. The warning must therefore be directed to non-Christians in, in our context, <coughs> I am so sorry, something's chasing me, and I think I've been caught. The warning must therefore be directed to non-Christians, specifically the Jews <coughs> that he's writing to, who are intellectually convinced of the gospel, but who fail to receive it themselves. Over our years in ministry, I don't know how many people have said to us, as we shared our personal testimony, talked about how we got saved or shared the gospel, and they say, well, I, I don't understand it all, or I'm just not ready, or I want to wait a little bit. 
Hell is full of people like that. <clears throat> so, this is a warning to the intellectually convinced. And the reasons for this exhortation, I see number one here, is the real danger of drifting. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we, we drift away. Pay attention, is what Wendy says to her class. Have you ever said that, Wendy? No, never, not more than a thousand times today. Now I want you to pay attention, I want you to listen. I used to say that to our kids, but it didn't work. <laughs> I'm thinking of Amy, she's in here. We must give earnest attention to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. And it's possible for people to drift past the gospel and neglect so great a salvation, as chapter 2, verse 3 says. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at the first began to be spoken of by the Lord and was confirmed by those who heard him? And for those unsaved hearers of the gospel, the danger is very, very real. Remember, this is directed to those that have never trusted Christ as Savior. Maybe they've been in church. Maybe they've heard some of this. Maybe their family is Christian. They're intellectually convinced. They've heard the truth but then they casually pass by. As the writer of Hebrews says, all those who have heard the gospel should accept it, turn from their sin, and trust Christ's finished work. And remember, you don't have to be totally evil to go to hell. You just have to drift past the gospel and not trust Christ as your Savior. Number two, the dignity of the one through whom God has spoken is the key factor in these four verses. In chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, we have already learned that God speaks to us through his Son through Jesus Christ. And we have seen that this son is, number one, superior to the prophets. We've already learned that. Number two, superior to angels. God has spoken to the world, for God so loved the world that he gave. He has spoken to us in this room and to those that are under the sound of the gospel. He spoke through his son. And we see in the scriptures that his son is appointed heir of all things. God the Father gave Jesus Christ the right to be heir of all things. We find the Bible says that Jesus is the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person. Jesus, for the believer, is our sustainer, our redeemer. He's the one that we have trusted. He is the firstborn. And by that, not that he was born first, but he was born in rank, first above all. And he deserves our worship. He is the one that our, the Father has enthroned and anointed. He is the Lord Yahweh, who is the eternal creator. He is sovereign. He is reigning at God's right hand. 
And when God spoke through angels back in Moses' day, he said that the words spoken through angels proved steadfast, true, undeniable. <clears throat> and the rebellious Jews suffered and lost the ability to go into the promised land. Jesus' word is steadfast. Every transgression and disobedience to the word of God, people will receive their just rewards. God spoke through Jesus. He spoke through his son. <clears throat> and his son spoke a word that will be steadfast. In every case, <clears throat> in every ability, dare people neglect the Word of God? Dare they drift past <clears throat> with all of their excuses, with all of their problems, when it is God who spoke through his son, Jesus Christ. And the confirmation of this was given in the passages that we now have. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those that heard him? When I open my Bible in the New Testament and I read all the different letters or epistles written by Paul or James or whoever, they were eyewitnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ. They heard him. They walked with him. They knew him. In 2 Peter, I will read chapter 1, verse 16. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables. Boy, that's going on today in America. It's going on around the world with religion. These cunningly devised fables that have been presented to people, and people like sheep in the pastor have followed some of this, and they bought it, and they drift past the very Son of God. These divine, or these cunningly devised fables, when we made known to you the power, the Apostle Peter says, and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. There are many people over the years that have endured much for the cause of the gospel. Some have even died in what's happening in China and North Korea that we read is going on in these house churches and people just fearful for their lives. They did not drift past. They trusted Christ as their Savior. In verse 4 we read, God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his will. And the signs and the wonders that were performed by Jesus Christ, and then later, as he was permitted, the Apostle Paul performed some signs, and we see that the confirmation is true. In John chapter 10, verse 37 says, if I, do not, if I do not do the works of my Father, don't believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father has sent me, I, Jesus, am he. And Christ is confirming the truth of that. Shall we neglect the word of God which was born out and drift away? 
If we drift away, we first of all will lose so great a salvation. Chapter 2, verse 3 of our passage. It is just marvelous to have trusted Christ. It's a great salvation because it offers such things as the forgiveness of sin. No matter how many times I stumble or blow it, I have forgiveness from the Lord in my day, and I know that etern my eternal life is secure because I've received forgiveness of sin. Also, salvation offers transformation of character by providing power over sin as we trust the Lord, put off, put off sin, put on righteousness, and obey Him. It provides assurance of God's fatherly presence. No matter where I go, the Lord is there. It provides a clear and peaceful conscience within the believer when you know things are right with the Lord. And you've dealt with the past baggage. You've unpacked your Samsonite. You've laid it before the Lord. And now you can trust Him. It provides a glorious hope of eternity. And I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that when my eyes close in death, I'll see the Lord Jesus. It'll not be a doubt in my mind. Dare we lose all of this through neglect and through drifting? Following the metaphor of drifting, what currents in that imagination water might cause one to drift? Well, the first one I thought of is the current of time. It's a time when, as time passes by, the need for the gospel, the urgency for the gospel, the pulling in your heart that the Holy Spirit is doing, if you don't trust Christ, Time will go by, and you will begin to drift, and you will lose the fervor and devotion, as we see in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, with the Ephesian church. Sometimes we grow weary with well-doing, as Paul wrote in the book of Galatians chapter 6. Or, in time, we may begin to rest on past accomplishments. The old saying, rest on your laurels. That sounds uncomfortable to me. And it doesn't get anybody to heaven. We cease pressing forward because we've drifted. There's the current of familiarity. As we become familiar with this truth, it may seem commonplace to us. Well, first of all, when we first walked into a, a Bible teaching church, I was so nervous and uptight, I couldn't hardly handle it. We followed our friends down the aisle and sat in a certain place, and I was about ready to scream. I wanted out. I, I've never seen anything like this before. There were happy people in that place. There were people that sang heartily and they liked singing. You see, if I had just seen that and got excited and then let myself drift, the novelty of the day would have been gone. Some people drift in time. Another current I think of, not only familiarity or of time, but the current of society, the tides of our modern life and our modern world, the tides begin to seduce us. And those without Christ have nothing to stand on or to hang on to. Modern opinion, it is bombarding true believers. 
secular humanism, false religions, plastic Christianity that's tailor-made and designed to pack them in. This is offered as truth in many places, and it's hard to maintain the course. And those people that are drifting are being caught away by such things. I think also of the current of the flesh, the humanness of people. There's not a war, there's not only a warfare without, but there's also a warfare within. And Satan does not want you to get saved. He does not want you to trust Christ. He wants you to keep on drifting. Keep on, keep on. And he'll provide the pattern. Drifting. Be careful. There's also the current of daily concerns. Well, we can all relate to that, even those that have been saved. But there's a constant pressure on the unsaved. Maybe they are sincere, maybe they are looking, but they just have drifted past. And the daily cares of life, the anxieties, the duties, the work, it can distract that person. And Jesus has warned against this on many different occasions. So what's the key? You may be witnessing to somebody who you think is starting to drift. They've not yet made a firm decision for Jesus. Well, first of all, the Bible says we must give the more earnest heed, is the way it says in the Bible. Imagine yourself in that canoe, and the river with that slow-moving current is carrying you by. But if you have a failure to pay constant attention as you are drifting, you could end up in the bushes or over the falls, lest we drift away. You might try last-minute corrections, but there's no guarantee. Only by giving earnest heed to the Word of God for the unbeliever, that's the way it is with salvation, to be diligent at the task at hand. There's no place in God's word for half-hearted people after they've heard the gospel. We must give earnest heed. We've got the word of God spoken to us by Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit as it was written, what a great salvation is available to all who believe. So we must give heed to the things that we have heard. And sometimes people will give lip service, but if they don't follow through, They've never really trusted Christ. As the Berean church did in the New Testament epistles, they received the word with readiness. And they searched the scriptures daily. And they didn't allow their lives to drift. Are you here and you've never trusted Christ yet? You can be a member here since dirt was created and it won't get you to heaven. You can look like dirt and not get to heaven. You can clean up and look, oh, so much like a Baptist and not get to heaven. What's involved is what you do with the scripture. How sad to drift past so great a salvation. Let's bow in prayer. Lord, you've warned us, lest 
we slip away. And I pray today, if there's any that have never trusted Christ as Savior, even though you've been sincere and you thought you were right, as we're singing the closing hymn, one of our elders will be down front to meet you and can answer any questions you might have concerning your need for salvation. Maybe you need somebody to pray with. We want to be available for everybody that's in here. So God, we commit this to you, and we want to please you in every way. In Jesus' name, amen.